everybody. If you're in here right now, you're here for How to Win Friends and Influence People in a 280 Character Universe. The last time I gave this talk, or a talk similar to this, was WordCamp Baltimore. And it was labeled when I pitched the talk, 140 Character Universe. And three days before I gave the talk, Twitter upped the character limit to 280. I quickly retitled my talk, dot, 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 or even a 280 character universe. Um, but it's been almost a year since that happened now, maybe more like nine months, and I've revised a lot because a lot has changed in the uh, social media landscape over the last year. So we're going to be talking about social media tricks that everybody should know for your WordPress website. My name is Laura Byrne Cristiano. You can find me pretty much everywhere online at New Yorker Laura. I am an original New Yorker. I live in Philly now. But I was just joking with Mirabai down here that um, years of doing theater have somewhat eaten the New York accent out of me. But by the end of this, if I'm going really fast, you'll hear that uh, natural New York accent coming back. Oh, and I should also say that all of my slides will be up online on my website. I also have them on my Twitter account, too, so if you want to follow along that way or you don't have to like write furiously, these are all going to be out there for you. Okay, so let's kick this one off. Number one is this. On any social media platform, even if you're not posting to Instagram, you have to have a picture. We've all heard the phrase, a picture paints a thousand words, right? So if you have 280 characters, you want your thousand word benefit, which means you absolutely have to have a picture. And there's a couple reasons for that. Number one, when people hear or read information, they only retain about 10% of that information three days later. However, if you pair a relevant image, and not just an image you just popped up out of nowhere, a relative, a relevant image, one that goes along with that content, they are so much more likely to retain what it is that you're saying, which is what everybody wants. The other benefit is you want that conversation to continue. You want to retweet, you want to like, you want somebody to recommend it, you want somebody to link that Facebook post over. You are so much more likely to get engagement and to have somebody else share that engagement if there's a photo to go with it. And the people, they then see it Oh, it's a photo, that's great. And then they share it. It's kind of like that old Breck commercial, those of you who are old enough to know what I'm talking about. And so on, and so on, and so on. Everybody over 40 is nodding. Everybody under 40 is going, what is she talking about? <laughs> YouTube it, it's out there. Um, Facebook without a photo. This is super, super important, folks. Facebook without a photo will be seen by almost none of your followers. Facebook strongly prefers natively posted content featuring a photo or a video. If you put up text, literally it's a waste of time. So let's show a little bit about that photo thing, why don't we? Here's a tweet put out by Publishers Weekly. A uh, very popular industry publication, covers everything in publishing, super relevant source. Here is one of their not so good tweets on the fact that uh, Senator Kamala Harris has a memoir coming out. Got almost no engagement online. Same information from the San Francisco Chronicle. It actually links to the Publishers Weekly story. That photo goes, wait, what's that about? I want to engage with it. I want to share it. I, I, I'm now paying attention. Um, the other thing about the photo, and which is probably a whole other presentation, but I can get into this at the happiness bar later with anybody who's interested. The photo right there passes what I call the quarter test or the thumbnail test. In order for me to engage with a person in the photo, their face has to be the size of a quarter or the size of my thumbnail. Because I can see eyes, I can see emotion, I can see facial expression. If they're back in the distance, I lose all that. So this is an awesome photo, very likely to get retweets, very likely to get engagement. Here's the next one. Always post directly to Facebook. And I'm going to say this in two ways. There are a lot of fantastic plugins out there that will auto-post your content to all sorts of social media platforms. And depending upon what kind of business you're running, there are different social media platforms that are right for you. Some people are better off on Pinterest, other people are better off 
Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, what have you. Um, not everybody has to be on every platform. My hilarity that I read recently is for some reason best known to them. The New York Stock Exchange thought they should make a Pinterest page. <laughs> I'm not sure if they're making bull and bear brownie recipes, what they're doing exactly with that. Um, but there are different platforms that are best for each people. Um, if you're on Facebook, it's great if that plugin is going to post the content out there. I would say absolutely go for it, do it. But go back later with, and in case you missed it, post, and repost it and natively post a photo up there. You will find a huge difference in the amount of engagement you get on that post. Um, the sample I have sitting up there is a Facebook page that um, I run called twilightlexicon.com, which is another whole talk if you want to know what that's about. Um, but a photo that I posted natively, 84,000 people reached with over 1K likes. The one that auto-posted via the plugin, less than that, 32,000 with only 485. Similar content, similar value big difference versus a native posting versus one that came in over the plugin. And like I said, I would do it twice. I would absolutely let the plugin get out there and get the message because something is better than nothing. But then later on in the day when I had some time, I would revisit it with a native post. It makes a huge difference. Even though we're at 280 characters, let's save, save them for a really great message. And there's a couple ways you can really save that character count. And number one is often you're talking about different people, different organizations, whatever, and that eats up your character count. Well, if you're always posting with a photo, did you know that you can tag people in the photo rather than the tweet? Saves your character count. It also notifies that person, that entity, that you have tweeted about them. So they are likely to retweet you because they've been given a heads up. Another thing that you can do is you can put some of your messaging into your photo. I used as a sample uh, an item that I created last year for WordCamp US. I was on the WordCamp US uh, marketing team for 2017. And we were trying to promote uh, a series of Google Hangouts that we were doing to kind of give in people information about our event in the new city that we were in that year, which happened to be Nashville. And there you can see I wanted to promote that we had five people who were going to be on a Google Hangout, what our topic was going to be, and just get all that out there. Well, I was able to accomplish a lot of that in a picture, and then get out my messaging and then throw the hashtag on it. Now when I created that, my, my limit was 140 characters. <laughs> now I have more, but still, it's a great eye-catching way to see it. Plus, with something like that, if somebody retweets it, they can find that on their timeline really easily. If they're like, oh yeah, what was that event that I wanted to go to, and they skim down their timeline, they can find it really fast. Or they can skim down your timeline and view, see it really fast. It's a great way to do that. Also, a little later on in this presentation, I'll let you know how you can create a graphic like that really easily, and you don't need to know Photoshop. Even though Twitter has increased its character count, there are ways to save character space. Using um, ellipses, m dashes, n dashes, different quote styles, um, take up less room than you think. They take up one character versus like three characters. If you use an ellipse versus a dot, 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 it comes up as one character instead of three characters, which people don't realize. Uh, and it really saves you a ton of space. You can do them, as, I, as you can see there, um, via an ASCII code or the Mac, uh, whatever you have with an option plus. Um, also, if you're on mobile, what I've done sometimes is to create a little um, cheat code in like notes. I have an iPhone, I have it sitting in a note stock, and I just do a highlight, copy, paste. You can do it that way. There's lots of ways you can um, grab this info, and I have my source there where I got it from. Show you a little thing of how it works.
do a little quote of Mr. Matt Mullenweg here. You can see the top quote from Matt. I cannot work on WordPress. It touches a lot of people. I consider myself lucky to be able to work on something I love. Trying to get all that out from a quote, and at the time I did this, I had 140 words to get it out. It couldn't fit. Then I got it to fit. And all I did was per replace dot, 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 which is the actual ellipse. I was able to set off his quote using um, an M dash, and I changed my quote style, and I got it to fit. So there's lots of little sneaky ways you can do that to get in more information. Here's a big one. This is something I've gotten on board with within like the last year and a half. Let's be allies to our accessibility friends, the folks who are using screen readers. They consume the internet in a different way than perhaps you and I do. Couple of things, hashtags. So when you and I see WCUS, or WCUS with a small case, we probably just say WCUS. Do you know what a screen reader does? When it sees all caps, it will read WCUS. When it sees lowercase, it's WCUS. Imagine being the poor soul with the screen reader with the tweets hearing about WCUS. Okay? Um, or really long hashtags. I've used this one, 21st century problems. Anybody ever use that hashtag for something kind of crazy that's gone on? Screen readers will read the camel casing. Imagine it non-camel casing. I can't even begin to think of what a screen reader would have pronounced that as. I have no idea. Um, so think about that when you're using hashtags for your organizations, whatever, that screen readers will read camel casing appropriately, and that if you want an initial, you've got to cap it, okay? You can't go lowercase, it's super important. Um, I also think just for those of us um, who are just general readers, we read camel casing better. We read um, caps better when you want to just do initials, so it's actually very good for people who are not visually impaired. Um, the other thing that happens now, um, on images, on Twitter, and other platforms, Instagram, you can add in the alt text, just like you would if you're creating a blog post in, in WordPress. You have the ability to add in that alt text on um, any of the images that you upload. So the screen readers can describe for the person who has a visual impairment, you know, this post is accompanied by a picture of, and it describes what the picture is. Very helpful. Um, the other one, and this is sort of just an accessibility issue for everyone, don't go hashtag crazy. I made a sample of what you shouldn't do. I'm starting to see a lot of tweets out there in the WordPress ecosystem and just the ecosystem in general where suddenly everything has become a hashtag. There is no reason to hashtag super common nouns. It's not getting you any traction. But I've literally seen people hashtag the word blog. I mean, seriously, how effective do we think that's going to be? It's far too broad, okay? Um, or hashtagging the word advice. Like, think about what you would get returned to you if you clicked on that. It doesn't make any sense. Now think about the poor person on the screen reader who in the middle of this is hearing this as unsolicited hashtag marketing, hashtag advice, not everything in your tweet, hashtag needs a hashtag, hashtag. I mean, do you see where this is going for the poor folks on the screen readers? Not to mention for me, who's not visually impaired, it's awfully rough on the eyes and I'm just losing your message. I mean, I'm just completely losing whatever the message is. Let your tweet flow. You now have 280 characters. Throw your hashtags at the end. And if you're really, really super pressed for room, then throw one in the middle. But don't make it a perpetual loop. It just isn't helping you at all. Okay, switching over to a different platform. Let's switch over to Instagram right now. 
Instagram is awesome. Instagram is the largest growing social media platform. Um, it's rapidly getting, it's sort of depending upon which poll you look at it, it's either two or three depending upon who's the researcher who did the data. Instagram is fabulous. It gives you so much flexibility. When you make a post, you can post up to four pictures. If you do some downloading of other apps, you can combine and stylize. You can do video. It is so creative. There's also another really creative option that I've seen people use well, but also badly. Instagram stories. Anybody know what Instagram stories is? You've seen it. It's kind of like the Snapchat thing almost, you know, it puts it up and it, you know, disappears after you do it. Instagram stories are great, but you want to balance. I have a picture here of something that's in Philadelphia, where I live, which is called the Rail Park. It's similar to New York's High Line. They're reconverting old railroad tracks into park space. Well, they had their grand opening of the Rail Park about a month ago. The bottom right corner, you can see a video they took of the grand opening cutting of the ribbon. Do you, every other photo that's up there after is either a stock photo or something that was taken weeks after. So what happened to the rest of the footage of opening day, grand opening of this major event, where they had a speech from the mayor, they had a speech from a variety of other local Philadelphia celebrities. The rail park winds through the Chinatown section of Philadelphia. The grand opening parade, which was citizens walking through the rail park, was led by local residents of Chinatown using one of the China dragons. You ever seen those from the New Year's celebrations? It was phenomenal. One of the local high schools had their award-winning marching band leading the tour for this. Do you see anything up there about that? It was all on Instagram stories. Up for 24 hours, gone forever. So think about that if you're posting on Instagram. I know those stories are the hot thing. Balance it. I'm not saying don't do it. I'm saying balance it. Because if you want really great coverage to last longer, you've got to make sure it's there to endure. So think about how you're creating a story and why you're creating a story. Be a good storyteller. Your story is only as good as somebody who can retell it. Okay, here's, now I'm gonna reference that other slide I told you about it. Now for another commercial for the 70s, all the people above their 40s are gonna nod with me and everybody else is also gonna go, what is she talking about again? I am not a designer, nor do I play one on TV. Yep, everybody above 40 is going, yep, I know what she's talking about, everybody below 40 is going, I don't know what that reference is. Again, YouTube it, you'll find it. So, here we go. I am not a designer. I have much respect for people who are graphic designers. I know what looks good, I'm like that, but I don't know how to do that. <laughs> um, so a lot of times you're creating content on your social posts, you don't have access to a designer, and you're like, I want a really good layout, or I want, you know, I need a better picture, how do I get it? One of the best resources I use is something called canva.com. What is phenomenal about them is they have layouts for every social media platform possible. You want an infographic, you want a Facebook header, you want a Facebook header for an event, which annoyingly is not the same size as a regular Facebook header. If you want an Instagram post, if you want a Pinterest post, pick your platform. They have a perfectly sized template for those images and they keep up in real time. So if Facebook changes tomorrow, they've changed. Um, it's all drop drag technology, all sorts of different layouts. A lot of it is for free. Do we like free? I like free. <laughs> Uh, and, if you, and they do have some other options. If you want to pay for a graphic, it's like a dollar. I'm not kidding. Or you want to pay for a special font, it's a dollar. It's not going to break anybody's budget. Um, you can also upload your own images. The item that I have up there is for a client that I did some work for called Specialities in Wool. They make um, hand-knitted Christmas stockings up in Vermont. 
And the top photo is one that they took. The cute little baby feet is a Canva image. And the wording is just in a text block. And this was a little drop drag. They had a template. It was like, I need, I, as I was making this post, I was like, I need a cute baby feet. I need a stocking. And I need a block for words. Oh, this one will work. And then all I did after that was make the colors match. That probably took me, I don't know, two minutes to make. Not bad for a girl who's not a designer. Um, the other thing that's really cool, if you do want to pay for a yearly account, the account is free. You get a lot of functionality out of free. If you want to upgrade and do a little more, I think it's about $125 a year or so for a paid account on close. They will let you upload a personal style guide that you have and upload fonts. So if you want to carry your branding through, it's super easy. And each time this color pickle will come up for you, it will um, come up with your own branding colors in it. So you can swap anything over to your brand, like super, super easy font styles, colors, what have you. Um, and they're also super good on accessibility. Um, there's lots of color pickers and things that you can really use on an accessibility level to make sure that it's readable, which is awesome. Okay, switching platforms again. Here's another thing I really, really recommend. Get a YouTube channel associated with your URL. The number one search engine is Google, right? Everybody always says Google it. True story, I was once in a meeting with Yahoo Movies um, to provide coverage for an event, and they were talking about a certain factoid, and I said it was A, somebody else said it was B, and in the middle of the meeting at Yahoo Movies, they said Google it. And I pointed out, I was like, I just want to check, did the lead of Yahoo Movies just ask me to Google it? And he's like, no, no, I really didn't say that. But anyway, uh, Google is the number one search engine. Guess who Google owns? YouTube. They talk to each other. They understand each other. Make sure you have a YouTube channel associated with your URL. The SEO benefit is fantastic. Um, you can do a lot with it. When it comes to video, um, I always say, you know, we've always talked about how a picture paints a thousand words. If a picture paints a thousand words, a video paints 10K. There's no doubt about it. How many of us have gone down that rabbit hole of looking at cute little puppy videos? You know, or like ridiculous like baby elephant videos. That's my new one. I just keep watching baby elephants. They're the most adorable things you've ever seen in your life. Um, <coughs> no matter where you broadcast, whether it is on uh, YouTube or Facebook, what have you, always think about cross-platforming it. There's no reason that you shouldn't put up the same content on Facebook and YouTube because people see things in different places, so make sure you put it up in both locations. That's very important. Um, they both have awesome live options. Facebook, I mean, you can just flip your phone and go live really quickly. Um, and YouTube, uh, you can do the same or you can do a hangout and you can pull in multiple people, which is a huge strength of doing um, the YouTube, uh, the, or the Google Hangouts and now that goes onto YouTube and they've made it a lot easier. Regardless of where you're using your video, like keep it, Keep it short and brief, unless you're doing like a live chat show, which maybe goes up to 30 minutes. Keep it brief. People want brief nuggets. Just to show you somebody in the WordPress ecosystem who does this pretty well, is the folks over at the WP Water Cooler. I don't know if any of you have ever had a chance to listen to their um, Google Hangout, uh, where they discuss all sorts of things, WordPress, with a variety of regular speakers that come on every week. Um, check them out, give you a nice sample, and like I said, that's something in the WordPress ecosystem if you want to see how some WordPress folks are doing it. It's really terrific. Okay, here's the next thing to consider. People tended to get into social media at different points. They may have started with Facebook, and they may have started with Facebook a while ago, and then eventually they drifted to Twitter, and then they sort of are on Instagram, and what have you. And the name of who they are on Facebook may not look like the name of who they are on Twitter, may not look like the name of who they are on Instagram. Make them all match, folks. 
The only place, annoyingly, where you will lose your followers if you rename is Instagram. Every place else, you take your followers with you. So if you have a Twitter name that wasn't the best idea, and I've been there, I'm on Twitter name number three, folks. Um, I'll give you that later on, it's the world's slowest learning curve of getting this right. You will import your followers with you, and it updates on all their feeds. They realize who you are, so there's no loss in it. The other thing, too, is back in the day, Facebook, when you would make a Facebook page, it would give you the URL and this really long number stream hanging out the back of it. Shorten off that really long number stream. The benchmark used to be you had to get, like, I think it was 50 followers, and then you had to go through this big rigmarole to change that URL. It's super easy to do now. Just get in there and change the URL. Make it match everywhere. Again, it's an SEO factor in this. Make it match anywhere. Don't make it difficult for people to find you. Um, the other thing, too, is make sure it makes sense. My good person, who I use as an example of this all the time, how many of you are Walking Dead fans? All right, we got a couple. Norman Reedus, who's, you know, Mr. Walking Dead, who will all riot if they kill off Daryl. His Twitter handle, for reasons best known to Norman Reedus, is www.bigbaldhead. Now, if you've seen Norman Reedus, he is not big, and he does not have a bald head. But it's an old, old project he did years ago where he was trying to get attention to some website that he did. It is so hard to find Norman Reedus on Twitter, it's kind of ridiculous. He would be so much better just changing www big bald head to Norman Reedus so people could actually find him. So think about that. We undergo changes in life. We rebrand and remarket ourselves. Make sure that your name is the best one for you and it matches everywhere. Okay, here's another one that's um, a lot of fun and a lot of extension that you can get off of the social media. So how do you bring this into your WordPress website? How does this feed your WordPress website? Obviously, when you're using your social media, you are linking, and usually your link will be going to that WordPress site that you own. It brings in traffic to you. It extends the conversation. It brings traffic with you. I always say to people, social media isn't a replacement for your website. The point of it is to drive traffic to your website, where you hopefully are engaging them on another level. Here's the thing, too. You can also send that the other way. So on your own WordPress page, don't make it a like hunt and peck and guess safari as to where your social media is. <laughs> Footer, header, contact page. And don't list like half the things. Like I have seen some pages where, oh, the Twitter is just at the top, but the Facebook is at the bottom. And if you go to the contact page, you can, it's like a game to find all the social media. There's lots of cool plugins out there that'll list your social media buttons. Use it, use it effectively, or if you're, you know, doing something hard-coded in a theme, make sure everything you are is there, easy for people to get at. The other thing you can do is in the course of a blog post, in a page, embed a relevant social media post. So put your YouTube video on your website, embed it if it can better explain and engage a story that you're doing. Embed a tweet where you talked about something else, again, that has a video, a clip, a photo, embedded into your site. People, it makes them really easy to find you that way. So like I said, sometimes that traffic can go both ways. And if you're wondering where, to, where do I get that embed code from, on Facebook, there's a little like dot, dot, dot at the top of a Facebook post. If you hit that dot, 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 you get an embed option. Also, sometimes on posts now, too, they're also coming with a, an embed at the bottom. It's inconsistent as to how it appears. I don't know why, but it is inconsistent. Those are the two places you can find it on Facebook. Twitter, there is a drop down at the top. It looks like a little diamond carrot. Hit that, you'll get an embed code. You can also hit the date stamp, and you'll get actually the URL of the specific post. So there's a couple ways you can grab this information. And I'll show you one way that I've been using it with a local community theater that has really um, increased our engagement. 
How many of you, your least favorite thing to do is upload media into Facebook? Like pictures, like for a gallery. Is this like, it takes a while, right? You know how if you upload into a Facebook album, it takes like, what, two minutes maybe? Here's how we approached it. We have our regular posts for our theater talking about whatever show is going on. This was a lovely little mix-up at Christmas time called um, A Susified Christmas Carol, which was all sorts of family fun and goodness. We had our photo of our Seuss meets Ebenezer Scrooge character, which was, you know, one solid photo we put in, wrote the info for the show, and at the end, we embedded, and I had to scroll down and put it in, we embedded the album that contained, as you can see, an additional 20 photos. It was a great way to get those photos uploaded quickly. It didn't take me a lot of time. It was a great way to shoot people over to my social and have people follow me over there also. Um, it was a great way when I uploaded all those photos onto social media, I tagged all the people in the cast. It just gave us a lot of benefit. So really think about when you're doing a post, a page, what have you, embed that social. The social just doesn't drive traffic in. You can also drive the traffic out, which again will drive the traffic back in. I know it's a little circular, but it works. Okay, I get to ask this question very often. Sometimes people will still are still a little fearful of the social, or what if I make a mistake, or what if I put my foot in my mouth, or what if I do something controversial and I wasn't even in, intending it? Nobody's nerfed. Um, people can make mistakes. It happens. I always say to people, it is far, far better for you to be in the conversation than not part of the conversation. It's the benefits outweigh the risks. If you do get into a situation where something unintended has happened, remember, everybody will find something. Okay, there's archiving, there's caching, people will find stuff. If you make a mistake, if you do something unintended, unintendedly offensive, own it and apologize for it. And not like a, you know, halfway apology. Not, I'm sorry if I offended, no, I'm sorry, people found this offensive, I would like to apologize. And then, you know, if it's not that serious, I usually try to come up with like a self-deprecating way of putting something. I manage a couple of Twitter accounts. Have I possibly tweeted the wrong item on the wrong account ever? Yeah. Um, I just would go, whoops, you know, or haven't had enough coffee today. Or hypothetically, when I was helping out WordCamp Europe, two years ago and I used a WCUS hashtag on three posts in a row instead of the WCEU, I might have said, whoops, that's what happens when you have jet lag. <laughs> so, you know, just if you make a mistake, own it. Um, the other thing too that I always tell people with social media, and this is a big one, this could even go, you know, as far as a blog post go, but blog posts take more time, and I think people have more time to cool off and realize what they're doing isn't the best idea ever, but social media, it's so immediate, people don't think about it. Social media is never the place for now, hear this. If you are on social and you're angry and it's now, hear this, it, it, nine times out of 10, it's not accomplishing what you think it's gonna think, do. Take a step back, breathe, think about it. I always say social media, particularly for your business, is a place to celebrate, it's a place to congratulate, and it's a place to inform. It's never a place for now hear this. Um, and then just two other points. Um, it's your page, it's your WordPress page, it's your social media, you own it. Nobody gets to tell you how to raise your children. Nobody gets to tell you how to run your social media. You decide what it is that works for you, um, you know, and play around, figure out what's best. Your children didn't come with an instruction manual, okay? I mean, you pretty much realize that the second you brought them home from the hospital. It's the same way with social media. Some of this is gonna be stumbling and figuring out what works. Make it work for you, don't be afraid of it. True story, what I do, my dog has a Twitter account. If 
I want to test something out, my dog, Scully the dog, goes out and tests it first. And then I'll use it on my own. So if you want to have a little fun and get your feet wet, create a social media account on whatever platform you're experimenting on for your dog. Okay, so hopefully you all got something out of this. Uh, you can find me everywhere. My name is Laura Byrne Cristiano. You can pretty much find me everywhere at New Yorker Laura. Uh, and I'd be happy to answer any kind of questions that you have. As I said, the slides will be up uh, on my website. There's also a link on my Twitter account. So if you have a question, just um, pop over to the mic here so we can get uh, the recording on the video. Anybody have any questions? That's okay, I'll just repeat the question, the video. Um, sometimes when I share a post from uh, WordPress, you know, like you have that example where it just looks like a large capital letter. Sometimes it's just like, you know, gray or black. Other times I actually get an image. Um, do you know how I can improve so that actually what I post now, I always get a graphic? Um, yeah, no, that's a great question. So you're, what you're saying is, is if you're posting, um, if you're linking a WordPress post onto a social media, whether it's a Facebook or Twitter or whatever, that platform will eventually pick up upon the, um, it's usually the featured image of the post is what it will, it, nine times out of ten, what it is going to pick up on is the featured image of your post. Um, so is there a way to guarantee that it will do that? Um, a lot of it has to do with connectivity, your web hosts, lots of things like that sometimes, the, the speed of what you're connecting with sometimes. Uh, what I usually do, the way that you can guarantee the photo, is to upload a photo yourself first. Order of operations here is super important. Um, upload a photo yourself first and then hit your link and you will be guaranteed a photo. Uh, and I use and I do that myself very frequently because I know exactly what you're talking about. Sometimes I'm like, oh, and now it looks like just a little gray question mark there, not what I wanted to do. Yes, I understand exactly what you're saying. Um, I've just sort of trained myself to always go with a photo first and then my link, and that will always work for you. It's a great question. Yes, sir. Uh, as a solopreneur, I'm doing everything all day, um, so I often forget throughout the day to be social, and then another day has gone by, and then a week it goes by, and then it looks like I haven't done anything online. Haven't done anything. Um, do you have any suggestions for reminders or ways to continually be social? Sure. Um, actually, what I did, and I totally understand that, um, I used to work for a rather large nonprofit, and I would get into my office at around 8 o'clock in the morning, and by like, if I wasn't careful, like by nine o'clock, I had gone down the rabbit hole and oh my gosh, it's lunchtime, how did that happen? Um, what I used to do generally when I would use the social for that organization, I did sort of what the previous speaker was talking about is I tuned out everything for 30 minutes. I gave myself 30 minutes in the morning, first thing, and it worked for that particular organization, but you can do it, you know, whatever works for you, schedule a time a 30 minute block where I'm going to make sure I post content or I respond to content. The other thing you could do is use a management tool and there's lots of different ones out there on the market. I kind of like Hootsuite myself personally as something and you can schedule your tweets. So if you were you know, sitting back on the couch in the evening and you've had a long day, you can kind of multitask between commercials and put out content. You can also schedule natively on some things like Facebook, but a Hootsuite account is a really way to get to a lot of platforms at once. So I do it that way. And then every so often, you just need a break. I mean, I find there are times that I'll be working, 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 and I'm like, I need a break. For me, sometimes it's, it's the break time. And I get up there, and I will then answer what people have said. I'll put out new content. I'll, you know, so I do it that way. I kind of schedule myself for it. Anybody else with a question? Uh, yes, sir. Uh, my question is, I know it depends on the uh, particular community I think, where you're making your post and, and sharing your content. But my question is, is there something as being too loud on social media? How often are you there? I mean, is there an ideal threshold there? I, it's a great thing that you preface it, but it depends upon the community. You know, culturally, everybody is going to have, you know, different things that work within not only culture when you're talking about um, ethnicity, there's also culture within 
um, you know, are you in a library community or in a nonprofit community? And honestly, it's going to be a case by case basis. If anybody tries to tell you it's a one size fits all, that's super dangerous because there's a big difference between, say, the Coca Cola Corporation and what the Coca Cola Corporation is going to put out and how often they're going to put it out and what a local nonprofit is going to put out versus, say, even your local faith based organization. There's a big, big difference. So, um, I'd be happy to engage with that more one-on-one -on -one afterwards, but yeah, there's no one-size-fits-all answer there at all. So thank you. So I'm getting the time signal here for being being done. But if you want to extend the conversation, I'm happy to continue with it. Uh, continue with it with you. Try to say that ten times fast. Um, over at the Happiness Bar next door. So thank you very much for coming.